Hi there, welcome to my build of this 40 inch wingspan flying wing. This is Voodoo 6 and it's starting to look really exciting. Now we've got the main, the, the bulk of the, the, the structure finished. Now in this video we need to start thinking about fitting the, the rest of the elements of the wing that we can't move. So for example the elevator on the back here has to go here, the ailerons need to go here and we're going to be mounting the wing servos for the ailerons and finishing off the sheeting on the underside. Now the reason I say the elements we can't move is because I've been starting to think about how this is going to balance out. It's got a very long nose with a big engine on, tail booms are quite long. And what I want to do is I want to get all those elements finished that we can't move, that we've just mentioned, so we can then think about things like how it balances and where we need to put that battery in the wing, where we need to put the servo for the elevator, the things that we can move to make sure that we get a nicely balanced wing at the end of it without adding any additional weight. So the first thing I'm going to do anyway is mount those wing servos and I'll show you what I've done so far on the bench. As I've said I'm going to be putting the servos into the wings around about here on either side to operate the ailerons. The ailerons are full, full length of the wing so I'll just have the connection onto the horn for the aileron around about here. Now I have real concerns with, with this, uh, this wing at the moment that it's going to end up really, really nose heavy So because we've got a big engine in the front. So I'm quite happy putting the servos quite a long way back in the wing and then we can put in the tail and we can balance it out and see where everything else goes. You can see I've done the, uh, the sheeting. I'll just turn that over on the under on the underside there and also the uh, a little bit of sheeting just where those uh, bearers engine bearers come into the uh, into the wing all need sanding of, of course still now to fit the aileron servos I've made a plate this is one and a half mil plywood and I've just done some softwood blocks which I've epoxied onto the plywood and I did them slightly wider than necessary and then pinched them in and screwed them in. And the reason I pinched them in is just to put a very slight curve on this to mimic the shape of the wing. When you put these screws in it's important to pilot drill that or this wood will split. It only needs to be a really fine drill and I've put on a little piece of uh, one and a half mil ply on the top there just across the grain to stop it from splitting as well. But these are really strong, I'm, I'm quite pleased with how it's worked out. So that is just going to go into the wing there and I'm going to make a structure to hold that. Now first thing I've done is I've put in a extra piece of rib like this and I'm just going to glue that in with a bit of aliphatic resin. I've done that on both sides, I haven't glued either yet. And then I've got a piece of balsa with a couple of pieces of 3mm plywood just glued into the top and that is going to fit into the wing, or sorry onto the rib like that and I'm going to make another one on that side and a brace across and then this plate can just screw down onto that like that. The reason I'm doing this on the top is because it's a wing and it's going to be bouncing along the ground on landing so all of the control linkages and everything will be a lot safer if they're actually on top of the wing rather than on the uh, on the underside. Well, I've now glued in these extra pieces for the rib, the, the stiffener 116 balsa just to provide a, a more stable platform for the ailerons to be uh, attached to. And while that's gluing I thought I would do the aileron hinges and I've got the aileron here and the hinges that I'm going to be using are these plastic mylar hinges and I just did a 
a centre line down the middle of that and, uh, and cut the hinges in with the scalpel. And now I'm just going to transfer the markings for this onto the trailing edge so I know where to put the, uh, put the slots for these. And it's really easy as to where the centre is because we've got two 116 pieces of sheet coming together on this trailing edge. And we're just going to put the slot centrally in here. Now, if you remember, we put in some extra blocks along here, which will give a little bit of extra strength and purchase to those hinges. And I'm just going to use my number three scalpel blade and a number 11 scalpel. And hopefully this will show up. I'll just zoom the camera in a little bit. Hopefully that's more visible now. And all I'm going to do is just take the scalpel down that centre line between those two sheets of, um, of balsa and cut in to that, uh, that extra strengthening piece that we put in. Being very careful to keep this nice and central. Put our finger on the back of the blade just to give it a little bit of a push but not too much. There we go. Right, now that's done, that should just accept the hinge nice and easy. There we go. Right, there we go. All four hinges in place now and, uh, and that's looking nice. I haven't profiled them yet, that will be the next job. And I always prefer to put the slots in before the profiling because you're less likely to damage the aileron and it's just easier to hold while you're cutting the slots. Right, well now let's do the hinges for the elevator and it's quite, quite a large elevator. You can see I've got a centre line on here and also a little bit of an arrow showing which is the front. So which is the, the end or, or yeah, end with the, or side actually, with the extra bit of strengthening in there for the hinges. Now this is the, the section that, that goes between the two tail booms to provide the stability, this aerofoil shape, and I put in four hinges already, and again, just cut those by hand on a, on a center line, just cut them with my scalpel, and I've got a, a, a center line for this tail boom and I'm just going to line that centre line up on the tail and just mark in the location of the hinges and then cut these in by hand and I will, I will put in a centre line down the middle of here and I'm going to do that by eye And just to be 100% sure that that is a straight line, because that is perhaps the most important thing. Okay, okay. so now we have our centre slots for the hinges. And we'll just cut those in again, as we did before, by hand. Just nice and steady cutting those slots. Okay, we now have all four slots cut, and I know you can get um, tools for finding the centre, you can get tools for cutting the slots, but I honestly haven't found a better way of doing it than simply lining it up by eye and, uh, and cutting the slots in with a scalpel. Uh, that works for me, but obviously when you're doing these things you find what works best for you. And now if we just... Swap this together. There we go. And so that will be rigid between the uh, tail booms and then we have our hinge surface. Now we've got the hinges done, what we need to think about is a counterbalance for either side of this elevator. The, this spacer here, as I said earlier, fits between the booms like that so that the elevator can move within the space here. Now, 
this is a large elevator and this is going to have a quite a lot of pressure on it when this wing's traveling at speed so you provide a couple of counterbalances 3 30 second music wire i believe yeah looking at the plans just coming out of here and some wheel collars to to counter that balance so i need to work on that now i'll probably just drill holes in here roughen the wire up and epoxy the wire in and then the counterbalance and i would think it'd be good to try and equal that so that we've got a, a similar weight this side right well i have a real dilemma here with this uh, with this with this elevator uh, I've, I've put in some uh, counterbalances that stick out uh, it's 35 mil from the leading edge of this uh, this rear elevator now if we have a look at the plans you can see that it's shown just a a, a piece of 30 second a 330 second music wire with a couple of collars well quite frankly I did that first of all and it made very little difference to the actual balance point of the wing if we look at the wing now we can see that rather than the balance point being there with these counterbalances I've put on it's brought it right to the front and what I've done is I've made up a piece of wire that's stuck into the wing and it's got a collar top and bottom and a piece of rolled lead around the inside now each one of these weighs let me just weigh it it's uh, I think it's about 15 grams each one of these so that will be about 30 grams yeah they're about they're about 15 grams in weight so that is doubling the weight of the elevator because the elevator is 35 grams and actually that doesn't do too bad a, a job of balancing it out but it is quite a lot of weight it will certainly having the balance point forward reduce the work the servo has to do so i think this is a lot better solution quite frankly what was on the plans i can't imagine it would make a lot of difference so i'm going to go with that for now and we'll see how we get on when we come to balance the final wing and whether we need to add a little bit more tail weight or maybe even lose a little bit of tail weight and maybe think about using these as uh, to help with the balance but we'll see how that goes please if you've got views on this and and you know about counterbalancing leave me a message and let me know what you think now have the control surfaces more or less finished i've got the the elevator in place with the counterweights slightly larger than on the plans but we'll see how that works out and the spacer just uh, screwed into place at the moment with just a single screw but that will need a more permanent fixture so that's finished and that that works nice i haven't got the linkages in yet because that needs to come once we've done the balancing to work out where the servo is going to go i've got the aileron and servo all mounted and connected on this one side and that works quite nice the suggested throws for the first flight of five sixteenths of an inch which is nice moderate <laughs> for combat they're suggesting one and one eighth which is about like that which is fairly frightening so that should be really good to uh, to get flying with those kind of throws i haven't done this other side as i wanted to just show you what i've done before i uh, sort of cover it in with the shooting so just putting that around to the camera you can see i've put these side pieces in both sides with the bits of three mil ply that i'm going to screw the the uh, the servo plate into and i've just done a, a cross brace here and i thought i might as well just fill in this section with sheeting as i as i did on uh, on this side the underside is not sheeted at all i've just put a a slightly wider piece of uh, a balsa in there it's not really a cap i suppose it is a cap strip but a, a terminal cap strip and the reason i put that wider piece is so that there's plenty for the film to actually to uh, to actually hold on to if it's just a wide cap strip then the chances are it could pull off as you shrink it we've now got this wing in a pretty advanced state once we've got this servo finished here and more or less everything 
that's been fitted now, like the ailerons, like the elevator, are in locations where we couldn't move them. That's kind of where they have to go. Now, in the next video, we need to start thinking about those things that we can move and how the balance of this wing works out. So trying to get those things, like the, the battery and the servos, into the right location so at the end of it we get a nicely balanced plane without having to add a big chunk of lead in the nose or the tail. So that's going to be what we're going to do in the next video, sorting out the balance. So thanks for watching, I hope you're enjoying seeing this build as much as I'm enjoying building it. It started to look really exciting and, and I can't wait to get this out in the field and, and see how it flies.